Security experts are saying that a full-body imaging machine could have prevented the attempted terrorist attack on Christmas Day. The devices can effectively peer through clothing, so airline passengers cannot hide objects like plastics or powders that could be used to make a bomb by strapping them onto their bodies. But critics are saying the imagers invade privacy. Joining us now, Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz of Utah. He is against full body scanning and a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Welcome. Nice to have you here, Congressman. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, there are several folks, including some members of Congress, saying that it's time now to sacrifice some privacy to ensure better safety standards and make it mandatory to use whole body imaging machines in our nation's airports. You pushed through legislation earlier this year in the House to ban image screeners. In light of this recent terrorist attempt, are you ready to drop your opposition to using these machines in the U.S.? Well, I appreciate uh, being on, but let me clarify. I didn't uh, push through legislation to ban the use of the machine. What it said is you shouldn't use it as primary mandatory screening, but you should absolutely use it for secondary screening. And in this particular case, this is the poster child of the guy who should have gone through this machine, if not once, twice. They had machines in both Nigeria and Amsterdam. I have serious questions as to why they didn't use this machine, because they had the machines, it does work, and what Homeland Security should be doing is pushing to use that list, the 550,000 people on the watch list. And by the way, who's watching the people on the watch list? But the guy's on a watch list. He's originating out of Nigeria. He, buy, he pays cash for a one-way ticket. This is the poster child for the guy who should have used this machine. The but, technology's there. It should be used everywhere. But you're saying it should be used as a secondary source. Yeah, I'm just saying that it shouldn't be mandatory primary screening. And Why the, not? The, look, I, I fly. Well, I fly every three or four days. Uh, I want the airplanes to be as safe and secure as possible. And I think the question that our nation's going to have to look at is how do we balance our, our civil liberties and the right for privacy at the same time secure the airplanes? And there's technology out there that's more effective and less invasive. And, and that's what we need to get to. It, it, the technology is rapidly de developing. Can you point to some of that technology? Because I was going to ask you about that. I know that you do believe yeah. that there are other uh, technologies out there that could be more effective than these screeners, such as? Yeah, for the good old-fashioned dogs, bomb-sniffing dogs, to those puffer machines that were deployed and then pulled back a little bit. We, we're going to need to look at, at expanding that program. Uh, you have heat-sensing uh, uh, type of... Uh, a technology out there that can go and look at a body and be able to understand if there's something out there that's not uh, emitting heat the way your body would. But if this and was also a, if the this technology, was a powder, if this was a powder uh, that was mm -hmm. not actually, you know, uh, detonated at this point, how could that be effective when you're using a heat sensor? How well, could that it, detect it looks this powder? At, it looks at your the heat coming from your body, and if you don't have heat or it's blocked by something, then that would give you an indication that there should be uh, more rigorous secondary screening. And then even if you were to take the whole body imaging machine and have some of the technology that they tell me that's coming with software that will create an algorithm to say whether or not there's an anomaly there, that's the type of thing that we need to move to. So it's a difficult balance, but gosh, of course, this is, uh, we, we got to make sure we but secure to the those larger aircraft. Point, to the larger point, given the mm -hmm. fact that we're living in this uh, post 9-11 era and that there are new realities setting in yeah. with the terrorists coming up with uh, uh, other ways to try to penetrate our security measures, uh, do you think it's going to come to a, uh, to a time where we're going to have to sacrifice some of the uh, privacy that we've enjoyed in, our, in an order to, for us to to be safer as citizens and passengers aboard planes. Well, I think we've already done that to some degree, and, it, and it's sad, but we also have to do it. And I think everybody who wants to, to go on those airplanes wants them to be as safe and secure as possible. I, I do as well. Again, the technology is rapidly developing. Uh, I just want to make sure we have a balance and don't give up every bit of privacy that we have. Um, and I think we can do that. We, we can certainly achieve both of those But do you think there goals. are going to be efforts now in Congress uh, to try and push forward uh, the fact that they want to be able to use these machines if needed? I mean, the fact is we don't have them in place. In no, well, airports. we should. That's why I said the, the, the technology is good. It works. Uh, what the bill that I offered, the amendment says, is absolutely use it as secondary uh, screening. And when you have somebody who's highlighted with all of the risk factors that this guy had, 
he should have gone through this machine multiple times. There were multiple reasons why security officials should have highlighted him and put him through the most rigorous secondary screening that you possibly can, including the whole body imaging machine, which was at the airport. That's what's so frustrating about this. It was at the airport, uh, but apparently from our sourcing, it wasn't used uh, with flights uh, bound for the United States. Um, at this point, though, when, yeah, you take a a, when you take a look at uh, what's at play at this moment, uh, you say that from your perspective then, it's better to focus on efforts to try to focus on these people before they get on board the plane. Look, we need to go after the terrorists around the globe. We cannot just be a reactionary body every time somebody comes up with some creative way to try to blow people up. We've got to go after the terrorists and use all the technology that we possibly can to get at those people. And what the questions we have for Homeland Security is, What's happening, for instance, with the 550,000 people on the watch list? Who's watching those people? Why aren't those people... Well, those are questions, of course, uh, that are being addressed right now. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah, but we've, we, we cannot be so politically correct. We've got to go after these, these, uh, these terrorists. All right, Congressman. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you. Thank you. During the campaign, President...